Phil, last time we, we were talking, it was the beginning of September. We've since had some lows and perhaps more recently a lot more highs. Your thoughts on the season so far? Yeah, first 11 games, one win, seven points, dropped 26 points, not fantastic. Um, but when we last spoke, I said that we had the right manager, he knew what he was doing, he needed some time. Um, and he's done exactly what he said he would do. Liam told me that our squad was too big. Um, and that was an issue. He's reduced the size of the squad from 27, 28 to what's now 18, 19. And ever since he's done that, we, we've gone the other way. So we're now 11 games unbeaten in the league. Um, last 10 games, we're top of the form table, averaging 2.4 points a game, which is championship form. And we're in a position now where we can look up and take every game as it comes to you know, for, for one of the cliche, uh, but we're looking up, not down. We're closer to the playoffs now than we are to the bottom three, which is which is nice. Last time we met, again, okay, one thing, that, a, a sort of constant theme throughout that was the period of change. We were going through a change as a club. We probably still are, but how is that change going? You mentioned it wouldn't be welcome in all quarters. Do we feel we've broken the back of the changes that need to be made across the football club as a whole? Yeah, I mean, we've we've got a fantastic team off the pitch, not to say that we didn't do before, but we brought in James Tedford, who's got Lee Falkard, um, obviously Natalie, um, and, and the volunteers are fantastic and, and, and doing their bit. And we've got a really, really uh, committed team off the pitch, and we've got a really, really committed team on the pitch. Uh, as far as further changes go, I, I think that we're in a position whereby as, as the squad, that's Liam's domain, so any changes um, you know that, that Liam wants to make, he'll, he'll make for next season and the rest of this season. He's got plenty of budget to play with. Um, and uh, I think the changes that we'll see moving forward now are going to be more, more cosmetic, more the infrastructure, um, you know, the stadium and initiatives taking the community foundation forward and, and so on. So, yeah, we, 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 you can never, you're never finished. Uh, but I think that we have broken the back of it now, yeah. In terms of one of the key themes, was you talked about stability as well, so we're talking about change, we're talking about stability, but in the mix of all that, we talked about a football club that was like a revolving door on the playing side. Um, yourself and, and Ian were very sort of steadfast that you, you had the right man, you were on the right place in terms of development of the football club. In terms of at board level, at board level, you sort of stuck with Liam through some difficult times when he was making those changes. Do you feel we're now on the, on the key and on the course to that stability? Absolutely. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, as I said to you in September, Liam knows what he's doing. What he says makes sense. Um, and he delivers. He's delivered on everything that he said he'd deliver. Everything that Liam discussed with myself and Ian has come to fruition. And the result of that has come to fruition, which is the upturning fortunes and the results. And Liam said he wanted a close-knit squad and we needed a close-knit squad, a smaller squad, um, and, and a bit more a bit more depth. And you know, he's brought in Liam and Marcus and Jordan and um, they've complimented the rest of the squad and delighted that they've chosen to stay till the end of the season, which is testament to, to where we've come. And without a shadow of a doubt, um, we've definitely got the right man and um, I can only see us going one way. In terms of the coaching staff and in terms of the, the sort of non-playing staff on, on the football inside of it, what does the structure of that look like going forward? We're full time. Um, so, so the reality is, um, you know, we've got Dan, who's our physio. We've got Neil Skidmore, who's uh, strength and conditioning. Um, we've got John, uh, you know, assistant manager and, and, and first team coach. We've, we've got down at the training ground. We have um, full time cook and, and cleaner, so the lads have the food prepared at training, etc. After training and before training, um, and, and that will continue to develop. We'll probably develop that further for next season. Um, and we'll we'll be we'll be looking to strengthen that to the degree that we need to in in a similar way to the squad. The stronger you are in every area, the uh, more successful you're going to be. People ask, always ask, are the funds available to strengthen the squad? However well you do it, however poor you do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, the reality is that uh, Liam was given a budget for um, transfers for bringing in players, transfer fees at the start of the season, and a wage budget. Um, he spent 10% of the transfer budget, so 90% of it's available, and he is at probably 65% of the wage budget, so to less than two thirds of it. I've spoken to Liam, uh, Ian and I have spoken to Liam and said, 
Are we going to are we going to change things? And Liam's answer is exactly what you want to hear. If someone comes along that will improve us, I'll sign them. And until they do, you know, we've got a great squad and we're doing fantastically well. We've had a lot of games. We've had a hell of a lot of games in a very short space of time. So there's some tired legs out there. There's been a few niggles. And, you know, it's not for me to comment on the football, but a couple of flat performances. I'm not saying anything that Liam hasn't said. But that's going to come with that many games at this time of year on, on some, you know, our pitch is, is standing up very, very well. And with us having Everton and Everton ladies here, this is our 40th game on the pitch this season, he's in good condition. We've played on some heavy pitches away from home and it, and it has an effect. So the squad have done well, plenty of funds available, plenty of budget available. Liam's managing it fantastically well. We've got a great squad that we're really, really happy with. If someone comes along that, that, that will make us better, Liam will bring them in. It's difficult at this time of the season. You're looking at loans really, and we've already got four loan players, you can only have five, so you've got one loan space really. Um, and from the point of view of permanence, it's a difficult time of the year to, to bring in somebody on a permanent that's better than what we've got. We've got some very good football players at this football club now. We really have. At board level, what is the sort of biggest challenge you have? Obviously, um, it's always easier when you're winning games and you're not losing them, but what are the biggest challenges you've faced this season? Biggest challenge was obviously getting through that that patch um, there was a lot of you know obvious negativity from supporters um so certainly particularly towards me and liam um and, and everybody feels it and that was tough it was tough times but i didn't at any point question any decisions that we've made i didn't at any point feel we didn't have the right people i didn't at any point feel that we weren't doing the right thing i just felt that it was time the reality is We've only really been well beaten in two games, Charlie and Rackley away. We were in every other game. We were, we've been unlucky in a lot of those games and just not put chances away. Um, you know, it's been... We're trying to do a lot of things. Um, and and without, without being overly critical, which I don't want to be, we've got a lot of things to do with the club because of what we want to do with the club. So, so we're taking it in a different direction. And so... That comes with a lot of challenges, and to be honest with you, the most difficult thing um, is time. It's having enough time to be able to do all of the things that need doing, because there are so many things that need doing, so, so many projects that we've got ongoing at board level, and Natalie and, and the team, there's so many things that, that still need tweaking and changing, so it's just time, and, and we've, we've had to sit down at a board meeting back in the last week, and we've just said, let's just, you know, we've got a list of projects, let, let's put them back into a list and let's prioritise them and let's deal with them one at a time and make sure that they all get done um, effectively and properly and, and in the right way for the football club so that everything's taking the club forward. The single biggest tangible improvement to supporters would be the stadium and the, and the main stand and we're, we're sat uh, doing this interview at the top of the, the, our main stand and in quite plush surroundings so um, it's been an excellent development. What are the short, medium and long term developments for the ground and, and the stadium? Yeah, so... Um, I think next week we start the refurbishment of, of all the internal toilets in the main stand, so in the grandstand bar and in the corporate area. So those toilets will all be completely ripped out and refurbished uh, and be brand spanking new before the end of the season. Um, in the, uh, we'll, we'll be adding a lot of security measures and, and things like that for, for obvious reasons that we don't need to talk about any further. Um, in the summer, we will be uh, taking the pitch up putting in new drainage system, sprinkler system, laser level in the pitch, returfing it. That's um, a, a significant job. And we'll also, all of the toilets around the ground will be being redone, ripped out and being redone brand new. Um, we'll have some new toilets, um, uh, which will be a more portable version behind the disabled shelter because we'll be hopefully finishing off the rest of the main stand, which will be the changing rooms and, and that side of the main stand and the cladding, etc. in the summer. And so we need that space. But um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be spending another significant amount of money on, 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 the, on the stadium, particularly the pitch and the toilet facilities. One of the things that you mentioned at the recent Trust in Yellow question and answer was plans to develop a training ground. We've obviously been at Stormy Corner over in Skemmersdale for the last 12 months, I think it is now, but um, what are the plans to sort of bring that close to them? How are they going on? Plans have always been to have our own training facility and base for our academy and ladies teams, etc. Um, and hopefully we'll be introducing our college programme next year as well. Um, that's progressing. 
quite well. We're, we're at a, a, an advanced stage, is all I can probably say. Uh, on that, and we've got more than one option, but it's looking very, very positive, and, and that's always been the aim and the goal for the football club to have our own base that, that belongs to us. One of the subjects which brought about some debate was that was the, the removal of the under-21 squad and the change to the junior stru structure. One of the other questions was, how do we bridge that gap from youth football to senior football, and what was the thinking behind the decision? Yeah, um, it, it was a football decision, um, and it was unfortunate that, that probably some people uh, that were involved in the under-21 setup made some public statements that were completely incorrect. Um, the reality of the situation was that Liam um, and John, and I completely agree as does Ian, you know, under-21 should be playing men's football at this level. You know, 19, 20, up to 21, you should be playing men's football at non-league level. The vast majority of our under-21s were under-18s. The vast majority were. There were very few over-18s in the under-21s. And it was felt that it would be best served having the 17s and 18s and bringing those 18s on. Um, I know there was a meeting last week that Liam attended, um, and we are going to start involving the under-18s. And uh, I think we've uh, agreed that... Every away game now, at least one of the under 18s will travel with the squad and get used to the experience, etc. etc. Um, but we, we've got to develop that and having our own facilities with the college structure will assist us with that. But the, the reality is that once a player gets to 18, they should be playing men's football. Um, might not be at our level, but certainly step seven, step eight, um, you know, they should be playing and getting that experience. And, we just felt that an under-21 team, you go 17s, 18s, 21s, the vast majority of those players were under 18s anyway, or 18, and, and it, it's, it's an easier gap to bridge by getting the young lads at under 18, if they're good enough for the experience at non-league level playing men's football. In terms of all of the things we've talked about, they all cost money, and uh, in terms of the football club, where, where are we at in, ter in sort of looking at the, the financial side of it? We've had the FA Cup run, we've brought some funds in through that, you talked about being 65% I think it was a playing budget. Yeah. Is the club in a better financial state in that respect? Yeah, the club doesn't have any debt, the club doesn't have any borrowings. Um, all of the money that Ian and I put in is is to acquire shares and, and, and so therefore they're not loans. So so the club's not in any debt. Um, it will cost 60% more to run the football club on a turnover basis than it did last year, which is covered by myself and Ian. And it, it's in a good place financially, but there are, there are no concerns that we have. Um, we've just got to make sure that we run it as a business. It's not a toy. Um, it, you know, it's, it's got to be here to stay. So the plan was always that we would build the revenue over three seasons. This is the first of those seasons. Um, and we've already brought in some additional revenues that we were doing. We have a lot more uh, non-match day revenue than we didn't used to have any non-match day revenue, but we now have... I mean, the, the function bookings for, for, for this year are significant, uh, to say the least. We've got lots and lots of functions and, and lots of stuff going on. The commercial side of it's improved, um, in, you know, and, and so our revenue will go up this year in addition to what myself and Ian put in. Hopefully we'll be launching some initiatives next year, including the college, which will generate additional revenue. And, and the idea was that in three years' time, the club will be self-sufficient on the basis of a budget of a full-time football club that can compete in the National League. And, and that's the idea, we've got to run it as a business and, and that's what we're doing. Talk about supporter engagement. Um, recently we've seen the opportunity again to um, look at kits and supporters to choose kits. A change one year in, is, is there a particular reason behind that? I think it's um, it happens at every football club at every level. I'm, I'm not aware of, of very many football clubs that don't change the kits every year. Um, Sometimes that's due to manufacturers, so you, you, you sign a contract with a manufacturer and you are expected to, to change your kit every year, but it's become the norm in football, to be honest with you, John, you change your kit every year, it's a way of generating revenue for the football club, um, and it's also to stop things becoming stale and stagnant, so people get bored of the same thing. We don't have huge, huge replica shirt sales at this moment in time, they're, 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 they're okay, they're not, they're not wonderful, they're not going to set any records, but... Um, it's an important revenue generator and, and it's also something that has become the norm in football, so I don't think we should be any different to that. Talked about community engagement, community foundation, how is that progressing? 
It's progressing very well. It's probably uh, uh, least probably the best person to answer that on Natalie, but we've applied for a charitable status and we should hear on that within the next few weeks. The, uh, there's a board of trustees being set up. The first meeting took place uh, the week before last. Um, and the work that's been done in the community now is significantly greater than it ever has been. Um, our first ever soccer school uh, took place last half term, which was almost oversubscribed, it was full. Um, lots more work we're doing with the schools. We'll be introducing new initiatives next year, so we won't just be doing football coaching in the schools, we'll be doing a lot of other things with schools and the community through the foundation. And that will continue to grow and become stronger and we'll, our reach into the community will, will continue to, to be a massive focus for the football club and for us. One of the questions supporters asked was about the, the paying at the turnstiles. And we obviously went to cashless turnstiles. Will the club do a review of that and how that's gone and, and look at it going forward? Um, it's been a success as far as we can see. There's been very few issues with it. There's been very few games where it's been a problem. Uh, it, even the Tramia game, I mean, we sold out the stadium for the first time in uh, 40, 40 odd years, 44 years, five and a half thousand people in here, and we didn't have any issues. The queues aren't huge. People have got used to it. Um, you can buy tickets in the bar if you want to. You can buy tickets in the shop if you can't buy them online. Um, and I, I don't see any need to review it. I don't really see it being a problem. It's been a there were a, there's, there's a minority who, who you know don't seem to to, to to like that. And it's you know change is change. Not everybody likes change. There's nothing we can do about that. But it's, it's, it's much better for, for the football club, it's much better um, from the point of view of moving forward and, and it will become easier easier and easier. In August we saw uh, record season ticket sales and the strategy saw sales of over 600 season tickets which is a unprecedented sales level yeah. in, in the football club. People ask and supporters ask in and say would the club consider revising the, the pricing strategy in line with the FA Cup and the FA Trophy matches for league matches? I think the reality is if you buy a season ticket, um, even in the main stand, I think you're getting to a game for less than eight pounds. Um, so I think the reality is that um, for what the season tickets cost this season, and I can't see that changing significantly if at all, we haven't had that discussion yet, so I'm not going to speak for the rest of the board, but um, I think the reality is that it's incredibly cheap to watch football here compared to a lot of other places. Um, I don't think that reducing the match day price of, uh, of entry would have a significant effect on revenue uh, until our fan base grows and we get more people through the door. Um, so there are no plans at this moment in time. It will be on the agenda for our board meeting probably later on in the season when we come down to pricing for next season etc. Um, and we'll see but I, you know Season, if you buy a season ticket, then you're getting into a game for significantly less than the reduced prices of the cup games. So, for me, 650, 700 season ticket holders, average attendance of 1,000, we only had 700 here on Tuesday. Um, the vast majority of people that come seem to be season ticket holders, so I don't really think it affects the masses. So, so for me, probably not at this moment in time. In terms of board and personnel, you, you have an existing structure in place. Supporter asked about, about about Nigel Allen. He was somebody you worked closely with when you were looking to get involved with the football club. Is there any chance that Nigel will ever become involved in the club? Um, Nigel was offered uh, a place on the board and an opportunity to invest at the same time as I was um, by by James, Adrian, and Ian um, and Martin, and, and and declined to do so at the time. So um, I think if Nigel had wanted to be involved, he would have taken the opportunity when I took the opportunity when it, when it was offered. Um, and, and so I, I don't see him having any involvement at board level in the future. He had that opportunity and declined it. Talked about the, the pitch having had its 40th game, I think you said there. Yeah. Supporters asking about, it's been a kind of winter, but what about frost if that comes? Is there a chance that the club would look at protection for the pitch? Uh, we've been looking at protection for the pitch, uh, and, and that's centred around the Tramia game, uh, and that's purely and simply because the uh, BT Sport actually provides you with those covers rain and frost covers to, to, to ensure the game goes on. We've looked at it, we've looked at the cost. Um, it's not something that's high on our agenda. The cost of those covers is just under £20,000, um, which is not a, a, a significant amount of money, but I think we've got to prioritise things and, and things like the toilets and the fans facilities are, are more important. Um, 
we only have potentially one more Tuesday game in the league, which will probably be the Spain World game when it's rearranged. Um, so I think we're getting to that point of view whereby, you know, if there's going to be frost, there's going to be frost and, you know, a, a postponement isn't ideal, but we've got lots and lots of uh, clear weeks to fulfil that. So possibly one for next season. It's in the middle of January now. Um, it's three and a half months to the end of the season, perhaps a bit longer, if we were to, to go on and, and get to the top seven. Your thoughts on, on, on the rest of the season? Um, my thoughts on the rest of the season are exactly the same as Liam's. Um, we will, you know, I'd love to say that we'll go and be until the, the end of the season, but let's 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 be, you know, let's have some reality about the situation. Um, he, Liam is targeting to an average of two points a game between now and the end of the season. The lads are targeting an average of two points a game between now and the end of the season. That's the target. That would give us 68 points based on previous seasons' average finishing positions. That would give give us third or fourth place. Um, that's the target. Thank you very much, Phil.